Okay, uh, by the way, the, who were here during the Unite? Okay, thank you very much. Now, we're gonna start our new series because this is a, a, a jump start after the Unite. And we will entitle this, Win. But before we will um, go to our message, by the way, there are still vacant seats in front. Uh, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. I'm not gonna eat you. Okay, please, for the benefit of those who are new, please, uh, if you do not know yet, please like us on Facebook. If you have a Facebook account, or follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash ElevateCDO. Same thing in, in FB. Please like us on FB at facebook.com slash ElevateCDO. Or you can heart click that heart button in your Instagram at instagram.com slash elevate CDO. Now we're gonna begin a new series entitled Win. But before we will do that, let me give you for the benefit of those newcomers to um, help you define what elevate means. Now elevate means this is what elevate means. Why are you here? Why are you in elevate? Now, Elevate is a nationwide student movement which aims to take students to the next level. Because you would say, uh, Peter Chad, I thought this is a leadership thing. Elevate, yes. Let's put it this way. Now, we will put uh, an acronym level, and this is what level means. Level means life empowered through values, excellence, and leadership. Now. Of course, we wanted students to be empowered. You wanted, when we say elevate, you have to go up, right? That's what elevate means. And when they say, how are we going to accomplish that? We focus in three key, key areas of life. Values. Now, where do we learn values? We believe that values is achieved. Or, or we believe that life transformation, sorry, I have to change this. Now, we believe that life transformation is achieved through faith in God and the values that are taught in His words. We believe that you have the right relationship with God first. If you want to be a leader, all the seminars that I have attended, leadership seminars, now currently I'm taking up Masters of Arts in Organizational Leadership at the International Graduate School of Leadership in Manila, when one of our teachers was um, Chris Dunham, you know, remember him from the Ravi Zacharias International Ministry? Now, this is what the context about leadership. If you want to build leaders, yes, we need the skills, we need the intellect. But you know, if you really wanted to build leaders, start with the heart. And that's what we, we also thought about Elevate. If you want to elevate leaders, you build leaders, you start with the heart. That's why you have to change the values first of the person. And second, we focus on excellence because a lot of us are into mediocrity. Ah, okay lang. 75% is okay. What are you gonna do, do with the sobra, with the excess? Pasar lang. But you know what? If I were an employer, I'm not gonna hire somebody na tanang grado ni mo 75. Diba? If na yung apply ikaw puro 75, pasar ka, wala kay bagsak. But there was somebody who applied 95. Ikaw, who would you hire in your company? 95. Oh, of course, 95. We have a stiff competition nowadays. That's the reason why Elevate inspires students to pursue a life of excellence. When I say excellence, do not dwell on mediocrity. Always aim for 100 when you take the exams. Kaya naman, kung marungan kag isa sa 100, pilay mong score. 99. What if you will aim 75 and you miss one question? What will happen to your 75? But that's not excellence. That's the reason why we inspire students here in Elevate to live a lifestyle of excellence, not only in one area of your life, of your life but in all aspects of your life. Pursue excellence. And third, leadership. We believe that we all have leadership skills. Do you believe that? Even the most introvert person can influence at least 
10,000 people in his lifetime. Do you believe that? That sociologist said in the book of John Maxwell, The Leadership in You, he says there that at least in your lifetime, you can influence 10,000 people. Wala pa kayo ng istorya, anak. Hilumon ka. You're the most introvert person. How much more kitabian ka? Paras na ko. How many people would you influence? More than 10,000. Diba? You get what I'm saying? Okay, now, leadership. Now, for you, no newcomers, I would like a volunteer. A volunteer and newcomers who could define elevate. Volunteer. Yes, there's a prize. Okay, newcomers. There's Please volunteer. For starters. Hola, lalaki. Yes, over there. Yes. May I know your name? June. 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 June naman. June. Okay, June. Welcome to Elevate. Shall we give that a clap offering for June? Okay, go June. What's Elevate? Elevate means taking students to the next level. Okay. Okay, June, I have a praise for you, June. It's in experiencing God's presence in everyday life. Live, love, Ramax Lucado. Okay, now, another volunteer. Another volunteer. Newcomers. Volunteer. Female. I want a female volunteer. Okay? How do you define? Level. 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 What's, what does level mean? What do you mean by level? Yes. What's your name? Mayumi. Where are you from, Mayumi? What school? Okay, Gusa. Alright. Okay, shall we give God a cup of word for Mayumi? Talagang napaka Mayumi niya. Okay, what do you mean by level? Uh, what do you mean by level? Power man, through man, through. Okay, I have a book here, Live Love, by Max Lucado, Experiencing God's Presence in Every Life. Thank you, Mayumi. Okay, have a good day. Okay, now, as what I've said, if you want to build leaders, start with a heart. Now, if you want to win your campus, that's the reason why. Uh, if you want to win campus, you have to start with the leader's heart, right? Now, I'm going to show you a picture. This is a picture. And not that one. That one. What do you see? Can you please dim the light in this part? A little bit. What do you see? What do you call those people? Fans. Huh? Fans. Okay. Fans, right? They were the ones who... I'm sorry about Miami, huh? Sorry, Clyde. I know Miami. So, three one na kami. So anyway, fans. Those are fans. Okay. What's the meaning of what those fans? Cheer. Cheer. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you another picture. What are those? Huh? Okay, those are players. Okay, players, question. Who wins the NBA championship? I said who. Among the two, na ako pictures ni Pakita. Players or the fans? Players. Huh? Players, okay? Bisan pag, okay, put it this way. Let's apply this. Bisan pag kung saan yung pagsingit niya, go! Go Miami! If Miami is already losing, so, if you want to cheer, if you want to cheer, you can't get the game. You can't get the game, right? You can't get the NBA crown. Oh? Okay, ba? Do you believe that? Okay, it will not win an NBA championship crown. Same as true, if you want to win your campuses, it is important for us to answer this question. Are you a fan? Or a follower, because good leaders 
are good followers or good examples. Okay, but you have to think, who are you following? You have to follow God. Now, I have two passages from the scriptures. Uh, we have two um, main passages here. Sorry, yeah. Matthew 4, 18 to 22. And then after that, we will jump to Matthew 16, 24 to 26. With all due reverence to the word of God, may I ask everyone to please rise as we read this passage. Okay. This is the first disciples. Let's read this all together. Matthew 4, 18. Here we go. He said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they had a fairness and followed him. Going on from there, he followed two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, who will both be Zebedee, their father, and lay their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father, and followed him. Okay, let's go to another passage. Matthew 16, 24 to 26. Ready, go. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Let's ask God for wisdom as we go through His Word. Father God, thank you so much for this time where you allowed us to come here to worship you in spirit and in truth. Dear Lord, we praise you, Father God, that you have given us this privilege to sing praises unto your name, dance unto your name, Father God, and even have fun at the same time. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be the one to teach us what we are about to learn today. And we pray, Father God, that you will continue to be with us. Give us an open and a receptive mind that we may be able to understand your word. Be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may now be seated. Okay, now. Just look at the last uh, main, uh, main passage that I gave. Jesus was talking about this. What does Jesus want to know or want to express about winning? You have to understand the words of Jesus, what winning is all about. And it, it says there, if you want to try to hang on to your life, meaning if you want to be selfish, if you want to pursue other things that distracts you, what, where will it leave you? Will you be considered a winner or a loser? Look at this passage. Jesus said, what is more important? That's the thing that you're going to pursue. And this is what Jesus said. But if you give up your life for my sake, for Jesus' sake, then you will save it and you will win. And that's what we're gonna learn this afternoon. Now, this is the picture of the first passage that I gave you, right? Okay, Matthew chapter 4, verses 19 to 20. And if you will look at this, that was Jesus and he was talking to Peter and his brother, Andrew. Uh, are you familiar with, with that? Okay. And Jesus, what did Jesus say? Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Because what were their were occupation? They were fishermen. Okay. Then, what was the response? In verse 20, if you see that, immediately they left their nets and what did they do? They follow Jesus. Now, I wanted to highlight two words here. Immediately and follow. Because we have to, it, by, by underlining it, by highlighting those words, we will be able to uh, define what a fan from a follower. Or we can uh, differentiate a fan from a follower. Now, look at this. The same passage, the same passage as we continue on, he saw two more brothers. His name is Fitz and Franklin. I don't know. Sorry. They were James and John. Okay. What's the name of their dad? Zebedee. Okay. What's their occupation? Fishermen. And Jesus called them. 
follow me. Okay? There's the word again. I want to highlight again immediately and follow. They left their boats, meaning they left their occupation, they left their father. And who did they follow? Jesus. Jesus. Okay, I want to take note of that because it will under help us understand what a follower means. Now, question, are you a fan or a follower? Follower. Okay. You look at this. Fan hesitates. Because I, I said I want to highlight immediately and follow. Fan hesitates. If you're a follower, you follow or you respond immediately. Now, let's put it in our dialect. Troy, Alisa Dere, Aring Mama, Taisa, Taisa. What do you mean, Taisa? Mama Taisa ka? Mama Taisa, Taisa ka? Ayaw ko po You know what? Delayed obedience is also called disobedience. Maglangan-langan nga ni ka, kaya disobey lang yung apunta. Are we on the same page? Familiar? Situation? Okay. Let's let's continue. Now, do you have an idea what a follower means now? A follower does not hesitate. Ah, no, sorry. But the follower does not hesitate. They obey immediately. Fans always hesitate and look for excuses. Now, I'm gonna sidetrack for a while. This is a very long passage in John 6, 1 to 69. There you will understand because it will help us understand the, the two main passages that we've read. But I'll just give you the highlights. This is the time when Jesus began feeding the 5,000 using only two, uh, uh, how many bread? Two and? Bali man siguro? Two fishes and five loaves. Okay, now, that's what happened. Now, then, another passage, uh, on that passage, it also talks about how Jesus walks on water. And then, Jesus said, He's the bread of life. He is the one that came from heaven. That anybody who would eat this bread will be saved and they will not grow hungry. He's the flesh from heaven. He's the bread of heaven that will satisfy your need. And you know what happened? People did not understand this. And many really deserted. And this is a very hard teaching. That's usually what happens to us when we do not understand. We cease to follow. And the same thing, I'm not talking about here followers. Maybe they're not followers after all. They were not true followers after all. They were just fans. Why did I say that? Because I'll, if you will look at verse 2 of that same passage, a large crowd followed him because they saw the miracles he performed for the sick. Now, I don't know. I really forgot that, that game. I think that's 76ers, Philadelphia versus Lakers. At that time, that was game one. If you remember the finals, I don't know if you will remember that because that was a very long time ago. Uh, I think my, my daughter Kay is still a baby at that time. Or maybe she's still inside at the Queenie's family. You know, this, this is what happened. This is what happened. It was a dying seconds, and then Sixers is behind Lakers. And it was played in their home, the, the court of uh, Philadelphia Sixers. I forgot what's the name of that, that uh, stadium. You know what? The fans were already beginning to leave. Because I know, <laughs> if you have the people watching, 20,000 people watching, you have a hard time getting into the exit and getting into the parking lot and go home. Ma traffic mo pagawas, right? Okay, what happened was that it was uh, a few seconds and Lakers was ahead. And you know, star fans of Sixers are beginning to leave the stadium and they were going to the parking lot and you know what the team did? They rallied a few points and they even the score and pushed Lakers into overtime. Who oh, overtime? How many minutes is overtime? Five. Huh? Five. Ten minutes. And you know what happened? It was a double overtime. You know what happened to the fans? 
They were already in the exit and they wanted to get inside. When they wanted to get inside, the guard did not allow them to get in. They already uh, allowed people to exit the stadium and they did not allow the people to get in. So what happened? They were... And they were the fans of Sixers. And you know what happened? Iverson was so... Nagabuchi Iverson. And Iverson said that, you know what, if people bet their life, you might be as well dead right now. Things like that. Grabbing my ni Allen Iverson at that time because he's the point guard of 76ers. And you know what? When you're a fan, you can cease to be a fan, right? Pwede ba ka nga, ari na ko mang Miami karon. Spurs na put ko. Diba? Eh nga naman. 3-1 na ba ya? Diba? Same thing, but if you're a follower, you will follow towards the end. And that is what Jesus is talking all about. Fans hesitate. They only follow Jesus because of what they can do. They will just experience the high peg ko kaya winning. My team is winning! Diba? Di pa kay ka. But, if your team is losing and you're not experiencing this emotional happiness, Ari, na paan na Miami? Spurs na put ko? Things like that. Balimbing na siya. Those are not followers. Those are fans. Now, let's go back to the main passage. Now, Jesus gave the criteria here that if you wanted to be His disciples, if you wanted to be true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, not just a fan, He said here, if any of you wants to be my followers, okay, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to win your campus to Christ? Okay, these are my criteria. If any one of you wants to be my follower, you must, what? Turn from your, let's do the, 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 the PowerPoint. Turn from your, Selfish ways. So meaning, you have to be selfless, not selfie <laughs> or selfish. You have to be selfless. Now, if you want to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you want to be a true follower, forget about yourself. You have to be selfless. Now, followers seek Jesus because He is Lord. Fans seek Jesus for the wrong motives. Let me say that again. Followers uh, follow Jesus for He is Lord. He is your God. But fans seek Jesus for the wrong motive. As you can see, Jesus feed 5,000. They follow Jesus because they saw the miracles that they did. And they were being able to eat the bread. Talk, not the bread talk. <laughs> the bread that Jesus multiplied during that time. You get what I'm saying? Now, I'm just going back to John 4 every now and then. I'm just getting you that, that if you look at John 6, John 6 rather, when they had found him in the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, or teacher. So, meaning, they were so-called followers. Actually, they were not. They were just fans. And Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. This is after Jesus multiplied the bread and fed everybody. Diba? Nabusog mo man sila. Nangyayon lang nakapagita sa Jesus. Kaya basig na apay crispy cream after bread toast. Diba? They were just following. Now, I just want to tell, tell you this. That... Jesus follow, uh, followers focus on the relationship with Jesus. Not just a relationship, but a serious relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, fanaticism, fan ba? Fanaticism is all about religion. Let me say that again. Fanaticism is all about religion, and fans focus on what they can get from Jesus. And also what I mean, the fresh benefits of being a Christian, what I can get. Because I'm not a Muslim, I'm a Christian, and that's in so called, I will be called a Christian. And they will also focus on what it takes or what I can do for Jesus. The rituals, going to church every Sunday, the duties, there's responsibilities, and all the so called rituals that entails to be a Christian. 
you know what? This is what Kyle, not Gogo, Adelman says in his book, not, or, or, not a pen. Now it says there, these are external measurements are useless because it only shows us as fans and not as followers who should live out Christianity from the inside out. Meaning you should focus your intimacy, your relationship with Christ rather than what your church tells you. You go to church every Sunday, you go to Elevate or things like that. I'm a joint OD group. Okay, para taupon kong Christian. I will go to church. I will pray every day so that I will be called Christian. You miss the whole point. You're just a fan. If you want to follow Jesus, you seek Him first. Focus your relationship with Him. You get what I'm saying? Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Go back to the verse. What does it take to be a follower? Selfless. Okay, second, let's look at this. Take up your cross. What do you mean by take up your cross? You know what? When you take up your cross, in all the times, Jesus used this metaphor, take up your cross. Or you just use this um, uh, use this uh, illustration, take up your cross, because during that time, that was the Roman period. And when criminals are being uh, punished, where do you place the criminals? Ilan sang sa? Cross. So meaning, if you want to follow Jesus, it entails commitment. Now, commitment until death. That's not a follower. Maybe you're just a fan. If you will look at this, the second point that I'm gonna, let, gonna show, share to you is that if you want to be a follower, you have to be committed. What's the first? Selfless. Second? Committed. Okay, that's the reason why Jesus is challenging them. If you want to be my disciple, if you want to follow me, take up your cross. Make a commitment. Now, do you know what a commitment means? That you will do that thing no matter what will happen. Rain or shine, you will go, you will come. When you say your word and you're a committed person, you will you do, you will fulfill as what you have promised. You get what I'm saying? Same thing with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to be his follower, you have to be selfless, you have to be committed. Now, fans, as we have said, are into your enthusiastic admirer. You just like him. But followers are completely committed. Well, fans are enthusiastic admirers, but uh, followers are completely committed. Now, ang fans, what are sila kaila? They have blurred understanding who Jesus is. But they recognize Jesus as just a prophet or just a king. Because during the time when they were being fed, in John chapter 6, they were being fed with the bread. And he said, oh, come on, let's make Jesus as our king so that we can rebel against the Roman government. But you know what? Every time that happens, Jesus will be withdrawn away from the crowd. And he will look for a solitary place to pray. Now, followers have a deeper understanding on the reality of who Jesus is. They follow Jesus because they believe that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the Christ. He's the Anointed One from God. Okay? Now, you notice the difference now? They recognize, fans recognize that Jesus is the Messiah. When they say Messiah, He is the Lord and Savior. Okay, let's take the third. The third point. Okay. Diba? When you follow somebody, do you follow like this? Huh? Do you follow like that? Of course, when you follow, you follow, right? What Jesus is talking about is that your focus, you have to focus on me. That's what Jesus said. Follow me. Focus on me because I'm going to model things. I will make you fishers of men. Who will make us fishers of men? Who? How did Jesus do it? He discipled intentionally. 
that's the reason why if you want to make disciples if you want to win your campus for Christ you have to be selfless you have to be committed and you have to be focused because you know what is the problem fans are focused on what Jesus can do for them selfish diba? what Jesus can do for me but you know what fans are also focused on their daily needs Lord, ako Lord, gusto ko nga matakos ang klase. Lord, Lord, I wanted this to happen. But you know what? Followers are focused on who Jesus is. Followers focus on what they really need. Do you know? Do you have felt need? Huh? Do you have felt need? Who are hungry? Who are hungry? I'm hungry. That's a felt need. Ba? Kung igutong ka, you have a felt need. If you you want to belong to a friend, gusto ka manakay barkada, that's a felt need. You want need to be you need to be uh, to belong to a group. That's uh, belongingness. Uh, higher, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They want they, they have a lot of felt need. And you know what? Kita lamang put a felt need. We wanted to be recognized at the same time, di ba? That's the reason why people are trying to 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 kibale pa gusto mo taas kanya naman they wanted recognition but you know what what's the real need the the, the first the first thread is that if what what uh what was that the song again by Toby Mac I don't want to gain the whole world and lose my soul I why is soul more important than anything else that's the reason why Jesus said you have to be focused you have our felt need is salvation by grace through faith. Fans are focused on what Jesus can do for them. While well, followers focus on who Jesus is. Now, let me give you the summary before I will ask this question again. Are you a fan or a follower? So if you're a follower, are you selfless are you committed are you focused now selfless a follower is selfless a follower of the lord jesus christ is selfless now why did i say that selfless for myself now have you found a verse in the bible that tells you love yourself Kita mo verse sa Bible to love yourself? Pero kita mo love your enemies? Yes. <laughs> huh? Why did God didn't give the commandment love yourself? Because it's so natural for us to love ourselves. Pag matanin mo sa butag, ano sa'yo, ano na mo tanahon? Not your cell phone. You go to the mirror and Ang ilang ka, you take care of yourself. Okay, sa naligo ka rin ang muntag. Ano yung pataas, wala ligo. Now, you know what? Because you take care of yourself, because it's so natural for us to take care of ourselves. You get what I'm saying? Huh? You get what I'm saying? Diba? Natural na kayo sa ato to take care of ourselves. Whereas loving our enemies, is it difficult? It is impossible. Diba? Without Jesus, it is impossible for you to love your enemies because only Jesus is, has capabilities to love your enemy. Diba? With Jesus, with modeling after Jesus, you now have the capa- cap- ca- capacity to love your enemies. Because this is what Jesus did. And maybe I can also, if I want to be focused, I want to be selfless, I want to be just like Jesus, then I have now the capacity to love my enemies. Okay, selfless. Second, you're committed. Third, focus. Three points only. Is it easy to memorize? You want to be a follower? You should be selfless, committed, focus. Now, before I end, I just want to share this to you. Being a fan it's not bad. It's something good. Right? It's not bad to be a fan. Okay lang, Miami hit ka. 
Oh, Spurs kami. Hey, okay. sorry ah. Huh? Now, being a fan is something good. But if you don't grow beyond being a fan, that will be your biggest hindrance to become a committed follower. Open it and you eat with. <laughs> being a fan is good. I mean, it's something good. But if you don't grow beyond being a fan, that will be your biggest hindrance to become a committed follower. Now, let me end this. Edmond Chad, one of our uh, speakers during um, some of the seminars that I attended, he said here, the greatest need for the young people today is not to entertain them with lights and a good program. Now, good program, the, the prices, the books, the lights that we have, the praise and worship, the jumping up and down, that's good. But you know what? It is the radical discipleship of Jesus Christ and for those who are youth leaders, the greatest thing that we can do for the youth is to challenge them to be 101% sold out for Jesus with discipleship that is radical and a surrender that is absolute. Now, do you, are you a follower? Yes. So, let me challenge you. Are you selfless? Are you committed? But we can try to, right? Because when you follow, it has to begin with the heart. Lord, I'm selfish, but I want to follow you. That's the reason why I want you to focus on your heart. If you really wanted to follow Jesus, forget about yourself. And be committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. No, it's, it will not happen overnight. That's the reason why when I challenge you, you have to pray. Now, it says there, we like Jesus. Maybe we can just like them on Facebook. If you see things there that Jesus said, or quotations about Jesus, if you like Jesus, click this and share this to all other friends. Yes, we like Jesus, but we are not like Jesus. That's the reason why Jesus commanded you, follow me. Because meaning, Jesus said, follow me, I'm modeling. You don't have any other models. You cannot model God because you do not see God. But God became human in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason why Jesus have this confidence of save everyone. Hey, follow me, Austin. And I don't mean Twitter. Jesus is telling you, follow me, Matthew. And don't just follow me as a Twitter. Okay? Follow me, meaning you have to model after Jesus. You have to be selfless just like Jesus. You have to be committed till death. Jesus was crucified on the cross and you have to be focused on the mission and vision that God has given you. And you know what's the mission and vision that God has given you? You have to make disciples. You have to make fishers of men. Introduce them to Jesus Christ. You know Jesus because you cannot follow somebody whom you do not know. You cannot follow a stranger. Even your dog will not follow a stranger. Except it is, if it's a Shih Tzu. <laughs> because some, some hairy dogs are dumb. They will follow even if it's not their owners. But you know what? Human beings, we follow somebody whom we know. Right? So in order to become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to follow and know Him first. Now, let me... Uh, before we will do that, friends, fans, do not win ball games, right? Who does? Who? Players do, right? Players do. Fans does not win or do not win ball games. Uh, sorry, do not win ball games. Players do. So what I'm saying is that if you want to win your campus, if I may say so, get into the game. What? Get into the game. Win your campus for Christ. Go and make disciples. Be a fisher of men. Do you know Jesus? Yes. Huh? Do you know Jesus? Yes. Then introduce him to others. There are still others who doesn't know Jesus yet. You have to be committed. You have to be selfless. You have to share Jesus to others. Now, be intentional and be part of God's movement 
of winning your campus for Christ. Now, question, are you a fan or a follower? Now, if you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you have to disciple your campus and win them for Christ. Is that a challenge? Now, this is my vision. I don't know. I just want to share this vision with you. Now, how many of you, how many of us are here in this room? Close to 80? 60, 70? Now, you know what? Last night, we have this college uh, elevate life because we separate high school from college. But if you're a college student and you're not available on Friday night so you can join the high school, it's okay. Okay? College students who are here. Now, this is what happened last night. This place also jump pack. Um, our attendance was 180. What? 180? 180 because we were counting 155 and there were latecomers who were not counted. So almost 180. So that's our mile marker already. In college, we're going to move to the main hall. The high school, oh. if, if we're going to fill this place every Saturday, then we're going to move to the main hall. Oh. So, it will not happen if Kuya Chad will just pray and uh, only Kuya Chad will do that. That's the reason why I challenge you. Go and disciple others. Now, this is like the vision. That's not yet a vision. I, I'm, I'm looking at by 2020, or maybe some of you are working, but you disciple somebody lower than you, right? Now, I want to feel the place atrium for youth worship every Fridays and Saturdays. Do you think God can do that? Yes. 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 With or without you, God will do that. But you know what? It's just a privilege to be part of God's mission, of part, to be part of God's movement. So do you want to be with me in the vision of being part of God's movement? Yes. yes. Now, if that's the desire of your heart, then win your campus for Christ. Do you have, if, if it, I want to make two prayers before we will close. Now, for those who are first-timers, if you hear this message, you cannot be a committed follower of the Lord Jesus Christ if you do not know Him. So if it is your desire to accept Him, know Him first, by accepting Him as your Lord and personal Savior. The second prayer that I'm going to make is that to challenge you. If you want to be a truly committed follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, then I will pray for you. First, let's bow down our heads and let's pray. For those first-timers who are here, just hear this message for the first time. I'll pray for you.